What's up folks, I hope this video finds you well. And I know that this is gonna be a little bit off topic, but this is a rare occurrence. You can only find a few documented instances of somebody doing a video on this topic across all of YouTube. So I thought this, it, it would not be doing it justice to perform this and not document it since I have the capabilities to do it. And what we're gonna be doing today is actually uh, euthanizing one of my hives. So to set the background a little bit, is this. Um, the hive has been pretty unfun to tend for a little over a month. And it's a really productive hive. It's, it's very, it's growing very, very fast. However, they have transitioned from a, a hive that is less than fun to tend to a dangerous hive. Those bitches stung my iPhone cover. They have begun to expand their defensive perimeter, and it's to the point where we can't really tend any of the other hives in the yard because they're on us. In fact, the reason I am filming this inside my truck right now is because I'm sitting in what would typically be considered a safe zone away from the hives, and they are bombing my truck right now. So uh, a couple days ago, my girlfriend was out here trying to help me tend that hive, and we failed to inspect that hive twice in one day because they were just all over us. And then this morning I had my friend and mentor come out and take a look at the hive because we were going to consider requeening it. And we just made the call that, I mean, we didn't even get inside of it and they were just swarming us to the point where you couldn't even see out of your bee suit. So uh, tonight what we're going to be doing is the Dawn dish soap method. Uh, where we basically douse the hive and dish soap and the they basically denatures their exoskeleton in ways that puts them down very quickly. And uh, then that'll also allow us to salvage the equipment to use on the other hives. And so uh, the hives that I have are going to get a little bit of a boost. <laughs> and unfortunately, that hive is going to uh, cease to exist. So what I mean by expanding their defensive perimeter, those of you who watch the channel regularly will know these yardage markers. Uh, that is the box that we used to shoot the 750 yard, and it overlooks the actual uh, flat range down there to about 250 yards. Well, the hives are all the way over there, and they're about 300-ish yards away, and I still have a periodic B trying to dive bomb this truck, trying to get at me. So I'm going to narrate this through for you guys because there are some lessons to be learned here uh, after watching the video. So I've got the towel and I'm shoving it in the front there. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it to make sure that it's actually killing bees. It's not just keeping them from coming out. And then I'm going to go for the top cover here, throw the rock away. And I've got a little bit of trouble with that top cover. It's kind of glued down. So I put some extra oomph in it and I just throw the top cover away like an idiot and don't do anything with it, completely neglecting that there's several hundred bees in that top cover. Uh, they were coming out like volcano, so I didn't use the queen excluder right away that I had brought. They can get through that, but they can't get through it very quickly. So the idea was to slow them down a little bit and be able to pour through it. So I've moved most of the first gallon of water through that. And I'm gonna go for a second gallon of water uh, after checking the front there because I want to make sure that I've got some water on every frame of that hive. Now the water is not coming out of the front of the hive quite as quickly as it is going into the top of the hive so it is filling up the bottom box uh, which worked out pretty good but you can see that I still have not done anything like an idiot with that top cover and there are bees coming out and flying around my head and I cannot figure out where they're coming from. I'm I can't see them coming through the top of the hive, so I know they're not coming through there. So I think that they're coming out the front, so I go out to the front to see if they're coming out the front, and then they're clearly not doing it that way either, and I can't figure out where they're coming from. And I completely neglect that top cover. You can see them moving around back there uh, pretty prolifically. They're, they're pretty pissed off, but... Um, I then think that I'm going to go to the next box. So I grab my hive tool and I start cracking that thing open. Oh, yeah. And then about the time that I move this box, now keep in mind I don't have my headlamp on yet, so I'm completely blind. I don't really know what I'm doing. I can only see a couple inches in front of my face. Um, I crack that top box off and I go to take it to 
that uh, place where I would set it, and I realized, oh, crap, that's a dumb idea. That's where all the bees are coming from, you idiot. Go get some more water, and sure enough, I'm just going to just douse all those bees that are back there. I basically fill up that whole uh, that that intercostal space there between the actual outer cover and the inner cover that's glued to it because there are tons of bees coming out through there. So I go ahead and grab my uh, queen excluder, throw it back on top of there, and resume dumping water through there. And I'm going to work through each of these hive bodies this way, basically pouring some in, moving down to the next box, make sure that they're fully saturated. And I will say this, um, this is probably a little bit overkill. Probably didn't need this much water, but even after all of this, there was just a couple still alive when we got back to wash out the hives. And basically what I wanted to do was wash all the dish soap off of the hive components so that I can use them for my other hives. They can take the resources out of them, use the comb and things like that. That stuff is not ruined. Just the bees and the, um, the larvae are dead. So... I'm going to work through each one of these. There were still a few bees left when I was doing that washout. And actually, I did get stung doing this. Not while I was actually killing the hive. It was after I had determined that it was safe and that there weren't any bees still left alive. And I could uh, take my bee suit, my bee gloves off. And I was about halfway through washing out this uh, whole hive worth of frames when I grabbed hold of one that happened to still have a little bit of life left in her and yep she totally stung me uh, right on the inside of the hand it wasn't too bad uh, at this point in time i've got bees buzzing around me still i'm trying to figure out where they're coming from and and if i can just smash them well folks deed is done we've got a few foragers still returning that are trying to sting the crap out of me we're gonna wait a few more minutes and uh, collect all of our kit and then we'll go wash it all out I have made a terrible mistake. It's a little over two weeks later and a day or so ago, I installed this replacement hive. And as you guys can see, I am standing, you know, 10 yards from the boxes, right next to the yard, no suit. This is much better. In fact, those boxes that were right next to that hive that I just picked up, I was able to do that without a bee suit on.